us to go straight away to um, verse 28. Verse 28. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And this is a very powerful writing that the Holy Spirit had given to Paul. The Holy Spirit had given to Paul. That is verse 28. I know you quote it off head, but I want you to look at it. Verse 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Have you read this scripture before? If you have read the scripture before, can you say amen? amen? And it gives us consolation. It gives us encouragement. It gives us encouragement. Can you say after me? Say, and we know that all things work together. For good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Now, the word of God is reminding us that even the children of God will have to suffer in this life. When you read the whole chapter, and I was talking to us last time in this place, I, 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 I went to verse 35, I think I read from verse 31, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And we read through, and we say it, verse 33, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect. It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yeah, rather, that is risen again, who is even at that right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. And then verse 35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? No. Or distress? Or persecution? Or famine? Or nakedness? Or peril? Or sword? Now, these are the natural calamities. And I used to call them natural calamities. And the Holy Spirit crying through Paul says... In the form of a question, who shall separate us? Who shall separate us? Now, that question is not meant to look for an answer from outside. That question is meant to affirm the position of God to his children. Who shall separate us? And then he, he lines up those calamities. And you see... Those are the natural happenings. When you hear of famine, sometimes it's natural. When you hear of uh, some of these things you, you have mentioned here, persecution. Is there somebody going out looking for persecution? No, it just happened. When you hear something like uh, uh, there's some kind of nakedness, which, which is kind of demonic. You look for money else everywhere and, uh, and, and you look for that to be clothed and you are not just coming through. And it has, the Holy Spirit has put all these things down and says, who shall separate us? And then verse 28 says, And we know that in all things, and we know that all things work together for good to them 
that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. All things. Hallelujah. Can you say all things? Church, can you say with confidence, I want to say all things work together for good. You have your Bible? Yes. Can I see it? Let me see your Bible. <laughs> Look at it. Say, this is my Bible. And it's a letter God has written. To me. Praise the Lord. That is the letter that God has written to you. To give you the basic guardians as we live on this earth. And this book here, friends, is powerful. Come to me and I will tell you I have so many books. I have so many books. I don't know the exact number, but I have... I've read so many books. I see a book which is very good. I buy it. I read. I can read it only once. And then maybe future just for reference. And I don't read it. Maybe I don't read it anymore. There's a book maybe when I bought it. I just read one chapter. Somewhere in between that was of my concern. And then I left it. There are many books that have been said this is the best selling book. Five million. But I want to tell you something. There is no any best selling book like this one. And there is no any book that will increase in value than this one here. This one the value keep increasing. The scripture that I'm reading today, I've read it many times. I even quote it. But when I was reading it, things came into my mind. There's the way the Holy Spirit starts working using that word. And the Holy Spirit says, the Holy Spirit says that even the children of God will have to suffer in this life. Even the children of God will have to suffer in this life. And that all of the creation groans. When you read it down there, the whole creation groans and longs for the day when the Lord will return and set it free from the bondage and oppression of sin. Now, when I was talking to you two days ago, I said my main aim is to affirm you. For you to know exactly, or maybe rather, to, for you to discover or rediscover yourself. Because then, when you know who you are, there is some confidence that you gain. Your pastor is an engineer. Now, if you give him the drawings to put up a huge building, do you think it will intimidate him? Come on, do you think it will intimidate him? I'm not an engineer myself. If you give me the readings, those readings will be like Greek. I will not understand. But him, he's able to interpret them very fast. And he's confident of himself. And similarly, God wants his children to discover themselves and discover who they are. 
When you discover who you are, it doesn't matter what challenge comes. You know I'm a child of God. Period. The Bible says the creation groans for the sons of God to be revealed. For the sons of God to be... I don't want to go into that detail. Those, if you read the whole chapter, you will, you will see it there. But we are also longing as children of God we long for a day when our earthly bodies will be exchanged for redeemed heavenly bodies. We groan. We are waiting. We are eagerly waiting. When we don't have to go through what we are going through. And I will tell you, some of you here are going through some very serious challenges. I will tell you that. I will tell you, there are some of you here, even when you live here, there are issues around your life, you really don't know how you are going to take care of them. But can I tell you, church, can I tell you, friends, can I tell you, beloved, can I tell you, even that very thing that you are going through, now you may not see the value, but after some time, you'll say, surely, all things work together for good. That thing, that thing in your life, that may, that may be, that would seem to be like, would destroy you. There's something God is working through you. And by the way, you are not going to be destroyed. Praise the Lord. Instead, as you trust in God, that thing will change. And it will turn to be a blessing. There's a song we would sing. Every challenge becomes a blessing. When it's an old song. How many of you know it? Every challenge becomes a blessing. When I know the Lord is mine. Every challenge becomes a blessing. When I know the Lord is mine. And then there's the way it goes. Faith in Jesus. Faith in Jesus. Faith in Jesus. Who said something, something, something. So, every challenge becomes a blessing. We all have to face the consequences of sin and evil in the world. We all must face that. And as a church... As a church and as individuals, we must know that we are living in the world which is so corrupted. So corrupted. Such that we have to be very careful how we talk, how we walk, where we go. And that's why Paul says, let everyone work out his own salvation with fear and trembling. Even you yourself, you are a challenge to yourself. Hallelujah. Because you are still in this corruptible body. You still have a challenge. Even Paul had a challenge. That's why he cried. If you go a little bit behind in verse chapter 7, it says, for the God that I would that I would I to do but the evil which I would not that I do now that's for another day Paul says the good I want to do is I'm not doing the evil I don't want is what I find myself doing We will face many trials. We may, may face many challenges. But I came here because it's a revival week 
for you to understand yourself when you and that very element of understanding will give you will affirm you and then will 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 activate something in your life we are given some very powerful encouragement in this chapter that we are talking about chapter 8 very powerful encouragement god is telling us that all these things will work together for good to them who will have Christ who love the Lord. Sometimes you are in a situation and maybe you are in a situation right now that even prayer does not make sense. Praise the Lord. I'm talking, I'm, I'm, I'm becoming real. Okay? Even prayer, even what you know, may not make sense. And that is human. That is human. A time when you go to pray and like you are empty. Maybe your emotions and the feelings are very flat. Flat. Unasema kwamba, walisema tuombe alafu unasimama, unataka kuomba. Unasema thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Then you don't have any more to say. Then you find yourself in a world of your own. You find yourself thinking of whatever is happening around your life. You're feeling nothing. Your walk with the Lord, your prayer life suffers. And could it be even here today there's somebody, you just try to pray and you can't just pray. You are trying to pray and you, are, you, you even don't know what to pray. By the way, I will pray for you. After this service, I'll pray for you. That's the purpose of this service. I'll make a prayer. I'll make a prayer. I'll make a prayer. Some of these things we go through, they pull us down. You feel even spiritually you are so bland. Umewai kwa na panga ambaye aiwezi kukata. Ama kisu kwa nyumba, unataka kukata nyama. Unajaribu kabisa. Aikati. You become so bland spiritually. The word of God has said something here. In verse 21, 26 of chapter 8. Verse 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Now, that's powerful. That's powerful. <laughs> Yani the spirit of God helps us to pray. Verse 26. Because as we don't know what we ought to pray or we don't know how to pray at certain times. So you see how God knows you. And God knows you that at certain point you are not able even to pray. And he says here, but the spirit itself makes intercession for us with the groanings which cannot be uttered. With the groanings. Groanings. Somebody once came to me. There's a sister who came to me. And was, there's something that has happened to 
had happened to her about twice or three times. And she found herself kneeling down, praying with a very deep groaning for somebody that she had never seen before. I mean, somebody that she had seen a long, long, long time. And so she came and asked me now, why? I found and then I went into fasting and I was not feeling like eating food. I went into fasting. I was praying, growing. Even more than I pray for myself. You can say my yes. Then I referred her to this scripture here. There's a way God will put a burden in somebody's heart to pray for you. And at that time you, do, you have no idea. And by the way, that person may even never even tell you that they were praying for you. And for your information, we as your leaders, we pray. Ukiniona hivi, I was in church very early in the morning and took time, quality time, almost one hour, praying for the congregation and the congregations. Pray. Pray. Do you know the prayer? I'm, I say pray. Pray, God, let no one miss you in the service today. Let no one miss you in the service today. Let everyone be met at the point of their needs. Oh God, oh God, I pray. Let everyone be met at their point of needs. That brother who is coming, you know his need. That sister who is coming, you know her need. Can you just come through my God? That's why they are coming to the service. They are coming to your assembly. They are not coming to any individual. They are coming to you. Meet them at the point of their needs. I prayed. 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 Mention all those other churches. Mention even all of them. But there is a way the Holy Spirit will pray for us with a groaning that no man can come to. In our weaknesses, the Spirit helps us and intercedes for us. In your weaknesses, the Spirit of God helps. He comes and helps us and he intercedes for us. And when we can't seem to pray because the burden is too overwhelming. Sometimes the burden is too overwhelming. The Holy Spirit comes and prays for us. The Holy Spirit comes to our aid and prays for us according to the will of the Father. And then you are not alone. That's why I'm telling you today, you are not alone. The Holy Spirit, when you accepted Christ, God is with you. God knows what you are going through. God knows what is happening. And we are in a revival week. I thought I need to bring this forth. And sometimes we don't know what we need at that point. And you see, sometimes we don't know even when we pray, what we can pray for. You may be praying for a particular thing. But there's a way God has organized your life. And sometimes we are strangers to ourselves. Church, are we still there? Amen. You know, sometimes you are a stranger to yourself. Sometimes you even don't know what you want. Have you come to a place where you say... You are just feeling hopeless and you don't know exactly what you want. And sometimes we are in that position. We don't know what we want. And that time, the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and prays for us. That's the word of God. 
the spirit of God grows for us. And I want to say what a comfort. What a comfort to know that the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and reaches the, that, that level where we are not able to reach. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit knows the needs of this church. And there's the way he comes in. Because it is the congregation of God. And beyond that, the Holy Spirit knows your needs, particular needs. It's amazing. And those moments when the burdens weigh so heavily upon us that we cannot even pray, the Spirit cries out to the Father. And that's what we have read here. The Spirit cries out to the Father. The Spirit cries out to the Father. The Spirit cries out to the Father. Because the Spirit knows. The Spirit cries out to the Father for us. Prayer in the moment of trial and confusion. And you are here and you think you have confusion in your life. I want to tell you, even that time, even that time, even the time when your mind is so blunt, even that time when you think you are alone, even that time you think you are walking that path alone, that lonely moment, I want to tell you, I want to tell you, you are not alone. <laughs> you are not alone. And I don't think the Bible can lie. Do you think the Bible lies? Even the time when you are not feeling yourself, you are touching yourself and you are not feeling yourself, the Holy Spirit is there with you and is praying with you with a groaning, a groaning that cannot be, you cannot be held by man. Deep groaning. Deep groaning. The Spirit prays for us with groans that words cannot express. Have you come to a place of groaning? I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure whether you've, you know what groaning is. Groaning. Groaning. Can you hear me? Groaning is when you have cried using all the words. Saying how painful you are feeling. Saying how needful you are. And then you come to a place you are not able to speak words anymore. You just start growing. <laughs> you are just groaning. 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 And I will tell you. I will tell you. We all come to that place. <laughs> we all come to that place. I don't know why we have this message today. Maybe somebody is in that place right now. Maybe you are in that place. And life does not make sense. Mm -mm. It doesn't make sense. Maybe you are thinking, you are thinking, and uh, your thoughts just go parallel. Maybe you are wondering, and uh, you are looking around, and no one is even, you are speaking, no one even takes notice of what you are saying. Your parents, maybe even your parents, they are not even in a place to understand what is happening. Or maybe your friends. The Bible says, when we as human beings grieve and sorrow is heavy upon our souls, we express that pain by groaning. It's true. We do so. We express it by groaning. 
I want to tell you, friends, I believe. I believe and I feel, I feel and I believe that the groaning of the spirit is closely related to the pain that we are feeling. The groaning of the spirit is related to the pain that we are experiencing. Church, are, are, you, are you getting me? A, am I too complicated? Am I too, do you think I'm too complicated? You, it, it's simple. Is it simple? You are getting it? And I believe when the Bible says groaning, the spirit of God comes to the very place where we are. Comes to the very place. It doesn't matter who we are. Comes to the very place where we are. And is able to feel the pain that we are feeling. Is able to feel the pain we are feeling. And that shows God is not an unfeeling person. It's not God who doesn't have feelings. God has feelings. God has feelings. God has feelings. And he feels for us. By the way, God came in person when we needed help. And he came in person and he gave himself a name as who? Come on, he gave himself as name as who? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God incarnate. He wanted to feel with us the way we feel as human beings. So he left his glory and he came to us to feel with us. Jesus Christ is God. And he walked around. Jesus Christ had friends. Praise the Lord. And one of them, one of the friends was, uh, am I the one misbehaving in this thing? Okay. So it's not me. All right. So, he, he had friends. Jesus had friends. Amen. Jesus had friends. He felt the same sort of pain that we would feel at the loss of a close friend. He felt with them. And that's what I'm saying. God will always feel with you. He felt with them. He could feel with the friends who had some loss. And the Holy Spirit also feels the way we feel. And that's why he can take it to God in a groaning way. The Holy Spirit feels the confusion and the grief of our hearts. The Holy Spirit feels that. He seeks hmm, to come into our position. He feels the rejection. The Holy Spirit will feel the rejection that we feel. He'll feel the abandonment that we would feel. And the suffering that we always suffer. He feels. He groans with us under our heavy load. He groans with us. That's what the Bible says here. He groans with us. He groans with us. Has it not said here? He groans with us. Likewise, the Spirit, verse 26, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray. For as we ought, but the Spirit in him itself makes intercession for us with the groanings which cannot be uttered. With groanings that cannot be uttered. He feels the load that you have. 
Friends, do you have any load today? Do you have issues that you cannot even tell somebody? Do you have something that you cannot even explain? I want to tell you, is it a kind of an embarrassment? Is it a kind of something belittling? The Holy Spirit knows it. The Holy Spirit understands. He will understand you more than any human being will understand you. He will understand you. He will understand you. He will understand you. You may say these people don't understand me. But the Holy Spirit understands you. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit understands you. Of great comfort however. Is that he expresses that grief to the father on our behalf. He does not just groan. He does not just whatever. He expresses it to the father. He goes to the father and groans to the father and, 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 and says it to the father. <laughs> oh, that gives me comfort. That gives me great encouragement. That gives me affirmation. He's doing it on our behalf. When he prays, it is not an unfailing prayer. It is loaded with our pain and suffering. The Holy Spirit prays and is loaded with our pain. It's loaded by our suffering and whatever we go through. The one who searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit when he intercedes for us. And I want to tell you friends, this should be of a great comfort to us. Church, this must be of a great comfort to us. Whatever challenge you may be facing, I want you to know. I want you to know that you are not alone. You are not alone. I want you to discover who you are. You are a child of God. God is a king. You are a child of a king. You are a child of a king. And a God has not just left you lonely. Men and women will go away and uh, will walk out of your life. They'll go away. They'll not care. They may tear your, 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 your emotions and the feelings into pieces. But I want to tell you, there is one who will collect them. There is one who will collect the pieces. And that is the Holy Spirit. He will gather you. He is always with you. He is walking with you. He understands what you are going through. He understands your emotions. He understands your feelings. And he understands the heaviness. Even when you are not able to understand. He understands the heaviness. Church, praise the Lord. The Bible says we often don't know how to pray. And it's true. We don't know how to pray. We don't know. Sometimes the words just don't come out maybe. Sometimes all that we can do is to groan and cry before the Lord out of pain we feel. Sometimes we don't have the words. Sometimes we just cry and groan. Sometimes it is just a confusion. We don't know what it is. And even we don't know how to go about it. But the Spirit of God meets us in that situation. The Spirit of God meets you in that situation. By the way, he is always present. He is always present. He prays for us and God the Father listens to the cry of the Holy Spirit on our behalf. He prays for us. And God the Father listens 
to the prayers of the Holy Spirit on our behalf. Because he is God himself. And because he also knows the perfect will of God. So he will pray for us in connection or in line with the perfect will of God. He will, he's not going to miss. He's not just going to bubble in words. He knows the perfect will of God. The Holy Spirit knows the perfect will of God in our lives. And when he prays, he will pray according to the will of God. Can I tell you? That is the blessing that we have. Even if you don't know how to pray, there's one who prays for you. Even when you pray amiss, there's one who cannot pray amiss, and that is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel like clapping for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Can we clap for the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. Amen. This scripture gives me hope. Sometimes when it is too, too hard and I want, and then I, re, I read this and it reflects on me that the Holy Spirit is actually praying for us. And I will tell you, it doesn't matter who you are you come to a place where you may not understand certain things. John the Baptist, are you hearing me? John the Baptist had seen Jesus passing with his disciples. John the Baptist had his disciples here. And said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of man. Have you read something like that in the Bible? Have you? And then, when he was baptizing people, the river Jordan, Jesus appeared to be baptized. And then he looked at Jesus, then immediately the Holy Spirit was very active. And then he was saying, no, 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 I can't baptize you. You know, you are greater than me. I paraphrase. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. It's befitting for you to do it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Do you think he didn't know who Jesus was? He knew what who Jesus was. He declared it. But then when he was arrested, can you say when he was arrested? Can you say when he was arrested? He was arrested by Herodias and then locked in. And he knew in the spirit he had known that this thing is fatal. Do you think what he had known before made sense? One of his disciples came. The one he had among those who had said behold the Lamb of God came to see him. Unajua muta kiwa gerezani unamperekea maji hivi unamperekea kasoda hivi pengine walikuwa wameperekea mkubwa wao kitu ya kukula si ndio wakati aliingia tunayo hivi anaingia hapa and, 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 uh, and I wants to show some sympathy and anamuliza ebu yule unakumbuka yule mtu niliwaambia kwamba behold the lamb of god yes ako wapi pengine alimwambia oh Uyo mtu sahi nafikiri uh, nimesikia nimesikia kwamba nimesikia kwamba um, anahubiri upande wa thika anakamwambia wacha hivyo vitu hapa chukua ingia hapa enda haraka kimbia enda wapi kule yuko muulize muulize namna gani are you the one we are waiting for are you the one or this we still have to wait for somebody else? In what in other words, are you the savior? 
But what happened? He came to that place. The man went and saw Jesus and told us, Jesus, I've, I've been sent by my master to ask you, are you the savior we are waiting for? He's in jail. <laughs> He's in jail. Are you the, same, are you the savior we are waiting for? Jesus did not say, tell him that I'm the savior. The Bible records that at that very moment, Jesus did so many wonders. The lame were walking, the deaf were hearing, and many, many, many other things, and are petting, and Jesus smiling, and the work of the Lord is continuing. Hallelujah. Amen. And then Jesus told him, go and tell him what you have seen. What you have heard, and what you have seen. Go and tell him. Do you think Yesu alitoka huko akasema kwamba eh 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 yule alinibatiza ako gerezani niende kumuona? Yesu alienda kumuona. Hakuenda kumuona. Yeye aliendelea na kazi. Na hapa hivi kazi ingine hapa John the Baptist yako ndani. Do you think Jesus saved him from the calamity that was there? Come on. John the Baptist's head was done what? <laughs> now, this is a this is a mystery. I may not want to go into this. But all things work together for good. John's ministry was over. So the sooner he goes to heaven, the better. But that for another day. Thank you.